If you won the lottery, what would you buy first? I'd buy all of his cars. Now what good is having millions of dollars in the bank if you don't spend any of it? I bet you have an answer. But would your first purchase be as big as the one these lottery winners made? Stick around to the end to find out what the winner of the latest record-breaking $2 billion Powerball jackpot spent his new fortune on. It joins this list of gigantic purchases. Like, number 15, a TV show. Jonathan Vargas was still a teenager when he won the Powerball in 2008. But even though he was just 19 years old, he knew exactly what he wanted to spend his $359.3 million fortune on. He created his dream TV show. It was called Wrestlelicious, and it was all about promoting barely dressed female wrestlers. Weirdly, there wasn't much wrestling on the show. Instead, they had to perform comedy sketches. I don't know why. Anyway, it didn't last long. The show only lasted one season before it was taken off the air. Vargas said he does regret spending so much of his lottery winnings on the cringe-worthy show. But does he regret his first lottery purchase as much as this lottery winner? Number 14, Moon Property. David Copeland got super lucky when he won $1 million, but some people think he totally blew all that cash on his first purchase. What was it? Property. That's normally a good investment, except his three pieces of land are located in some pretty unusual places. One patch is on the moon, one on Mars, and one on Venus. Maybe two of those will come in handy, but scientists say Venus is totally unfit for humans to live on. Also, I don't think any builders are willing to put a house on the moon. What do you think? Did David waste his lottery winnings? What about this next winner? Number 13, boob jobs. Loads of lottery winners want to give back to their families first. Sometimes, this is just about giving them cash. Others buy lavish gifts. Sarah Cockings did that. Eh, kinda. When she won $4 million at the age of just 21, she wanted to include her two sisters in her good fortune. So, she booked all three of them in for a boob job. Did they need it? We'll never know. But she still has a lot of her winnings in the bank, so she seems pretty sensible. And she probably still has a lot more cash than this next person on the list. After he bought, number 12, a football team. Colin Weir and his wife were lucky enough to win a whopping 161 million British pounds back in 2011. That's over 201 million dollars. He could have bought just about anything with all that cash. So what did he choose? He bought his favorite football team, spending over 3 million. That's a crazy price tag, but it got even bigger. Turned out, when he bought the team, he was also buying their debts. He stuck to the deal though losing most of his lottery winnings paying off their debt. Sadly, Colin passed away a few years ago, but he made sure he went out with a bang by throwing a huge party for all his friends that cost over $1 million. And he didn't even get to see it. But he's not the only person who spent loads of cash on a good time for other people. Number 11, Marijuana Legalization. Bob Erb had a pretty unusual lottery story. The day of his father's funeral turned out to be the luckiest day of his life when he stopped to buy a lottery ticket on his way to the cemetery. Amazingly, it won him $25 million. It was his first win, even though he'd been playing the lottery for 45 years. So what did he spend it on? He gave a mind-blowing $1 million to 420 Day in support of marijuana legalization. Do you think that was a good thing to spend a million dollars on? How about this next weird purchase? Number 10, a music career. Back in 2011, the Griffiths won 3.2 million on the lottery, and Roger knew exactly what he wanted to spend it on. While his wife was busy buying houses worth over 600,000 and a series of luxury cars, Roger grabbed 30 grand for himself. Sure, it's not the biggest purchase on this list, but it's a lot of cash to spend the way he did. He used it to try to get his college band to the top of the charts. It won't surprise you to hear it didn't work. It didn't take long before they'd blown all their winnings and got a divorce. But this next purchase may have been a little more successful. Number 9. A Whiskey Distillery Peter Lavery from the UK hit one of the biggest jackpots the country had ever seen and took home $17.7 million. He knew he wanted to invest some of his new fortune into his biggest passion, whiskey. 
but he didn't just want to buy an expensive bottle and drink it. He wanted the whole business. So he bought a whiskey distillery. It cost him a whopping $5 million. But amazingly, it was a pretty good investment. He recently sold it, but it was earning him a pretty big profit for years. And even the sale earned him money. This next lottery winner also spent his winnings on a successful business, but it was even weirder than whiskey. Number 8. Popcorn That's no joke. One lottery winner really did spend a chunk of his winnings on popcorn. Jeffrey Dampier won $20 million in the lottery in 1996. He decided he was going to move to Florida and open a popcorn shop with his new cash. He even named the shop after his granddaughter. He hoped that it would give his family a better life. Sadly, the shop was put up for sale after he was tragically murdered by someone who wanted his money. He's not the only winner to invest in a business, but the next one might have been a little too ambitious. Number 7. A Production Company When Cynthia P. Stafford won a whopping $112 million, she didn't need to think too hard about what to spend the money on. Sure, she first made sure to spend some on the four kids she'd taken in after her brother died in a car accident. But once she knew they were okay, she decided to follow her dream of becoming a film producer. She opened Queen Nefertiti Productions. Obviously, making movies costs a lot of money, but they can also make a lot of money. Sadly, that's not what happened. Her production company was a failure even though it did make a few films that got some good reviews. At least Cynthia tried to make something. The next purchase on this list was all about destroying stuff. Number 6. A Demolition Derby English teenager Michael Carroll became a millionaire thanks to the UK National Lottery. But what does a 19-year-old spend $18 million on? Michael decided to buy a huge mansion and set up a demolition derby in his backyard. Most of the cars were ones he'd bought himself, and a lot of them were luxury cars. It won't surprise you that he ran out of cash pretty quick. He'd literally spent it all on things he was going to destroy. That's not a great investment. But is it the worst one ever? You can decide after you hear about this next way one winner spent their millions. Number 5. Poker Evelyn Adams became one of the luckiest people in history when she'd won the lottery not once, but twice. Her back-to-back -back wins in 1985 and 86 meant she had a total of $5.4 in her bank. There's a lot you can do with that kind of cash. But Evelyn decided to spend it on only one thing. She took it to the casino. I guess she figured she had more luck left in her, but she was wrong. Between playing poker and the slots, she spent nearly every cent of her win on gambling, making this one of the biggest purchases on our list. By 2016, she was reported to be living in a trailer park, totally broke. Did our next winner spend her money on something better? Let's find out. Number 4. A High School Gloria McKenzie was already 84 years old when she won a mind-blowing jackpot in 2013. She hit the Florida jackpot worth $590.5 million. That's a breathtaking amount of cash, especially to someone who was living in a rundown rental apartment. Obviously, she upgraded her own house, and it was a big upgrade to a seaside mansion, costing her $1.2 million. But even that wasn't her biggest purchase. She spent a whopping $2 million on a local school that needed a new roof. That seems like a great way to spend your winnings this next lottery winner might not have made such a great choice. Number 3. Politics Janet Lee won an incredible $18 million back in 1983, and she knew exactly what to do with it. She spent a huge chunk of her winnings on support for the Democratic Party. But it wasn't a great decision. She obviously didn't make any calculations, because between the donation and her debts, she ended up totally broke. Oof. But that's not the worst thing a lottery winner spent loads of cash on. This next thing might be the worst decision ever. Number 2. Bail Marie Holmes was a single mom struggling to make ends meet. Then, in 2015, she hit the jackpot. 
She was one of three people who won the North Carolina Powerball's giant $564 million jackpot. That meant her share was worth $188 million. Obviously, she made sure her four kids were looked after and bought all the stuff you'd expect, like a new house. But one of her biggest expenses was a total waste. She kept spending millions on bailing her boyfriend out of prison. Got a huge prison sentence, but not before she'd spent an incredible 21 million bailing him out. You'd think he was grateful, but he later tried to sue her from prison for selling the stuff she'd bought him. So I think we can all agree, she should have just flushed the money down the toilet. But what about the newest winners who took home a record-breaking jackpot? Did they spend their money on something better? Number 1. Famous Neighbors The latest Powerball winners have been in the news for winning a gigantic jackpot worth $2.04 billion. That's more money than most of us could ever spend. So what was their first purchase? It's just as luxurious as you'd expect. They bought a huge mansion surrounded by famous neighbors in the Hollywood Hills. The house cost them an eye-watering $25.5 million. That's one of the most expensive properties ever sold in the hills, and definitely the most expensive purchase on our list. And it's still less than 3% of their winnings. Let's hope they hang on to their cash. We all know big purchases can lead to losing it all, but it doesn't have to be that way. Instead of blowing their winnings and going broke, some winners are pretty good at keeping their fortune. Take a look at our list of the smartest lottery winners of all time to see how they did it. The winner of the biggest lottery jackpot of all time has just bought his third mansion. Edwin Castro might have become the luckiest person alive when he won the record-breaking $2.04 billion Powerball jackpot. But is he spending his fortune wisely? Well, with this new mansion, he spent almost 10% of his jackpot in less than a year. Let's take a look inside his newest purchase and some of the things he's blown away his money on. We all know it's not all smooth sailing when you become rich overnight, and Edwin is spending insane amounts of money on something you'd never expect. The odds of winning the Powerball jackpot put you at a 1 in 300 million disadvantage, but Edwin Castro somehow won with a single ticket purchased at a gas station in Altadena, California. Overnight, the 31-year-old was suddenly a billionaire. Well, almost. He opted for the lump sum, which meant he actually took home $997.6 million. Oh, and then he had to pay federal taxes, which have been estimated at a whopping $370 million. He's just lucky that California doesn't add on state lottery tax for lottery winners, or he would have lost even more cash. So, in the end, Edwin probably had $627 million in his bank account. But let's not underestimate how much money that really is. But when the money starts rolling in, so do the expenses. And one of the most surprising things he's spending his money on is security. When you've publicly won a $2 billion jackpot, I guess you spend a lot of time looking over your shoulder. But do you sleep better at night knowing you're spending a whopping $21,000 a week on security? Castro reportedly has three guards on duty literally 24-7. The cost is just an estimate, but if it's true, that means he's spending over a million dollars a year on his security team. To put that into perspective, Jeff Bezos reportedly pays 1.6 mil a year for security, and that cost might include high-tech add-ons to his property. His security bill matches Taylor Swift, the Beckhams, and Jennifer Aniston. But let's not forget, those stars are the top earners in their field. Edwin Castro isn't really earning anything, except maybe on investments. Can he really afford that? Maybe, but it wasn't even his first expense. He bought two mansions straight away. There's no doubt Edwin has made some good purchases. His first two properties are pretty spectacular, and they're different enough to justify the two purchases even though they're both in California. But earlier this month, Castro bought a third mansion. It's located in California again. This time, he chose a spot in the iconic Bel Air. But this mansion came with the biggest price tag yet. He bought it for an eye-watering $47 million. It was sold to him by celebrity realtor Mauricio Umansky. 
And just like any home-built forest celebs, it comes with a whole host of impressive features. This mansion is the biggest yet, with 7 bedrooms and 11 bathrooms. All bedrooms in the house have their own large walk-in closet and a relaxing sitting area. As if that wasn't enough, all the ensuite bathrooms feature an oversized statement bath for the ultimate me time. But before you get a peek at that, you'll have to pass an impressively large koi pond at the entrance to the house. On the other side, you'll walk out toward a vast infinity pool that takes full advantage of a panoramic view of the entire city of Los Angeles. I guess Edwin just can't get enough of the views over LA. So much that he thought it was worth buying two properties that look out over the city. But the view isn't the only feature in the expensive mansion. The home seems to be built for partying and even boasts high-tech DJ turntables. There's also something called a champagne tasting room, which we're guessing is something only rich people understand. But there are other features we can all agree are pretty impressive. There's a glass walkway, a wine cellar, and a home cinema, so every visitor has something to enjoy. But like we said, this is the third mansion he's bought in less than a year of winning. Within just 30 days, Edwin had bought a gigantic mansion worth a whopping $25.5 million. We should take you inside this one, too. It's a spectacular property perched in the Hollywood Hills. As if the house alone wasn't enough, it comes with celebrity neighbors like Ariana Grande, Dakota Johnson, and Jimmy Kimmel. The three-story mansion is built into a cliff on top of a ridge that gives it an uninterrupted view of the valley below. The 13,500-square-foot house has to be pretty impressive inside to match that view, and it doesn't disappoint. Its contemporary block-style design means that the huge area on the main level is open plan, and that space is ginormous. On one side is a huge feature fireplace. On the other side, you'll find the stylish and very well-equipped kitchen, which boasts black granite countertops. The other side of the room, which overlooks the view across LA, is simply one giant wall of glass, so you always have the sparkling lights of the city as a feature in the home. Of course, the glass wall can slide open to connect the living area to the sun loungers and infinity pool. Even though the inside of the house is so close to the outdoor area, if you stepped around the side of the house next to the pool, you'd find a full outdoor kitchen with a built-in barbecue. But that's just the beginning. The house has five bedrooms and seven bathrooms, as well as a ton of special extras. And we'll get to those in a minute. The master bedroom also features the breathtaking floor-to-ceiling views of the city and takes full advantage of it with a big balcony with an outdoor sofa set. Walk through the ensuite bathroom with a stone shower toward the freestanding bathtub and you'll discover the bathroom also has its own balcony with spectacular views. There is, of course, a really big walk-in closet connected to the room. But that doesn't mean the other four bedrooms don't deserve some love. It seems like they also each feature a balcony, and their en-suites are all different, so there's always something surprising to discover. If that wasn't enough outdoor space, the mansion is also topped with a big roof terrace. To help you make the most of the outdoors late into the night, you'll find two fire pits hidden on the property. Back inside, there are plenty of luxuries to discover. The property boasts a private fitness studio, which also looks out over the beautiful views so you won't get bored while working out. It's equipped with not just one, but two luxurious indoor spa-style plunge pools, one hot and one cold. There's also a dry sauna and a steam shower in that serene space. Another level of the house features a spectacular bar that looks like it was plucked from a five-star hotel. And, of course, the bar is connected to a games room, with a pool table at the center. Just off to the side is a beautiful private movie theater fitted with super comfortable seats. To finish it off, the mansion has two separate garages that can hold up to seven cars. And that might be a good thing, because Edwin has been seen driving around in a vintage Porsche 911. You're probably wondering about the price tag. That's what we're here for. Sources say it's worth a whopping 250 grand. Let's face it. It's a gorgeous car. Must have been pretty difficult to resist that purchase. After the car, he went shopping again. This time, he was on the hunt for another mansion. This one didn't cost nearly as much as the first, and it's located in his hometown, so he might have bought it for a good reason. He probably wanted a place to stay when he visits his family. But even though it wasn't super expensive, it's still not cheap. 
it's worth $4 million. This Japanese-inspired mansion was built in the late 1950s. It's surrounded by tall, tropical palm trees and features a gentle mountain view. The property is clearly designed for serenity but still has modern finishes, like an open-plan living room, dining area, and kitchen. The large living room with floor-to-ceiling windows also has a fireplace and built-in clock as a feature. The Jatoba wood floors are another selling point in the house. The kitchen, like his other house, is very well equipped and comes with granite countertops and a kitchen island slash breakfast bar. The kitchen also opens onto a tropical garden thanks to large glass doors. The outdoor space comes complete with a saltwater swimming pool, a sun deck, and zen patio. Like the Hollywood Mansion, this property also has five bedrooms, but only five bathrooms, two less than the Hollywood house. The bedrooms all seem pretty big, and some even open out onto the landscaped gardens. You've probably noticed all the artwork by now. The house came with the artwork included, and it seems that alone is worth a substantial amount of money. Walk through the house, and you'll find another living room that also opens onto the gardens. There are a lot of hidden features to this house, too. It comes with a solar-powered energy system and a two-car garage complete with an electric car charging port. But that's not the only bonus. Aside from the private office, it also has a cozy cinema. Even outside of the screening room, the whole house is fitted with surround sound audio speakers, which all music lovers will agree is a dream. Does it sound like it was worth all that money? We hope so. And we also hope Edwin knows what he's doing. We're wishing him the best and hoping he doesn't blow all his cash on expensive houses like other lottery winners before him. Think this $47 million mansion is expensive? It's not even close to the most expensive homes in the world. You definitely don't want to miss these insane properties with the biggest price tags in the world. Imagine you win a million dollars overnight. Now, what's the first thing you would buy with all that money? If you need some inspiration, we've got stories of lottery winners who went all out with their first million in ways that'll make your jaw drop. Let's have a look at some of these wild spending sprees. Number 7. The Rainbow Sherbet In 2012, Louise White of Rhode Island became an overnight sensation by winning a colossal $336.4 million Powerball jackpot. The story behind her win is as delightful as it is unique. It all began when one of her family members started craving rainbow sherbet, and so Louise decided to take them to a store to get the dessert. It was the same store where Louise decided to purchase a lottery ticket, the very ticket that would turn out to be worth millions. Then, Louise did something really smart. The first thing she did with her lottery money was to set up a trust fund. She called it the Rainbow Sherbet Trust, after the lucky dessert that led her to buy the ticket. This trust was made to help her family, and it was her unique way of saying thanks to her lucky dessert and making sure her family was taken care of. Where Louise used her winnings to do something for her family, this next couple did something for everyone around them. Number 16. Water Park John and Linda Kuti were a happy couple living in Green Island, New York, and in March 2011, something amazing happened to them. John, who worked at the New York State Homes and Community Renewal, bought a Mega Millions ticket with his coworkers. And guess what? They won the massive $319 million jackpot on March 25, 2011. After splitting the prize, John and Linda ended up with $19 million. They wanted to do something special with their money. They wanted to give back to their community and honor their parents. So what did they do? Well, they went to their hometown officials and asked them how they could help. The officials had a great idea, building a water park for the community. John and Linda loved it. They donated 200 grand to build a spray park in Green Island. Now kids and families have a cool place to hang out in the summer. How awesome is that? John and Linda's decision was just perfect, and they would always be happy about it, unlike this next winner who spent his winnings on a thing that he regretted later. Number 15. Wrestlelicious This is the story of Jonathan Vargas. In 2008, this 19-year-old from South Carolina just wanted some iced tea and gas, so he stopped at the Casey Raceway Station. 
On a whim, he bought his first lottery ticket. And guess what? On May 17, 2008, he hit the jackpot, winning a massive $35.3 million in the Powerball. His life turned upside down. What do you do with all that cash? Well, Jonathan had a wild idea. He started an American women's wrestling TV show called Wrestlelicious Takedown. Pretty cool, right? In 2009, they released a trailer to hype up Wrestlelicious. The show finally aired in March 2010, two years after his big win. They signed several wrestlers, and the show had lots of matches. Jonathan even appeared on the show as JV Rich. Later, he thought about making a reality TV show based on Wrestlelicious. The show was a success overall, but there were rumors that he had some regrets about how he spent his winnings. Well, spending it all on a show is one way to go, right? Like Jonathan, this next winner spent his money on something he loved, but never regretted it ever. Number 14. Marijuana Bob Erb's story from Terrace in British Columbia is a bit different. In 2012, he was on his way to his dad's funeral in Calgary. During his stop at a gas station, he bought some lottery tickets. It wasn't his first time buying a lottery ticket. He'd been buying for 43 years now, and to his luck, he won $25 million. But here's the thing. Bob was already pretty well known in Terrace, and not for the lottery. Back in the 2001 provincial election, he ran for the BC Marijuana Party. His whole campaign was about legalizing and decriminalizing marijuana. He even gave out free joints while campaigning. Now, with all this lottery money, Bob decided to really push for marijuana legalization. He spent about a million dollars on his campaign and supported the federal NDP because they were all for legalizing it too. It's not every day you hear about a lottery winner using their money like this, right? While some spend money on things everyone can benefit from, others decide to use their winnings to improve just their life. Number 13. Dream Home Laura and Roger Griffith's story starts with a lottery ticket and a $3.6 million win. Roger was an IT manager, and Laura taught performing arts at a local college. They were smart, but managing this much money, that was new to them. So what did they do? Well, Roger quit his job, and they invested in everything they could think of and then they decided to spend their winnings. They went for it and bought their dream house for $1.6 million. They didn't stop there. A shiny new Porsche convertible and a Lexus SUV soon followed. Their two daughters got enrolled in private schools, which cost them 40 grand a year. Then came their shopping spree. Laura and Roger loved shopping. They splurged on jewelry, designer clothes, you name it. Then came the vacations. They went on fancy trips to Dubai, Monaco, and Rome. First class all the way. And just like that, their millions were spent on living their dream life, one luxury at a time. Laura and Roger spent their money on just about everything except one important thing. Interestingly, this was precisely what the next couple chose to invest in first and foremost. Number 12. Personal Advisor Merle and Patricia Butler were a retired couple from Red Bud, Illinois, and when they won, they had a different approach to their lottery win. They struck it big, winning around $158 million before taxes. Unlike many others, the Butlers didn't rush to spend their fortune. Instead, they took a thoughtful step. Their first move was to meet with financial advisors. Instead of dreaming up ways to spend their windfall, they focused on how to invest it wisely. They wanted to make sure their money would last and work for them. So they decided to use a good chunk of their winnings to get advice from financial planners and attorneys. It wasn't about flashy cars or luxurious trips for the butlers. They believed getting professional guidance was the best use of their money. And guess what? It turned out to be a really smart decision for them. However, this next person was not so smart about her winnings. Number 11. Gambling let us tell you about Evelyn Adams. She's a New Jersey woman with unbelievable luck. She won the lottery twice within six months, back in 1985. The first time, she won a whopping $4.95 million, and just four months later, she hit another jackpot of 1.4 mil. Imagine that! Evelyn was working in a convenience store when Fortune smiled at her, but then her story took a twist. 
With all that cash in hand, she headed to Atlantic City. The bright lights of the casinos called her name, especially the slot machines. It was like a dream, right? But as time went by, Evelyn's dream started to fade. She kept playing, and the money kept slipping away. Fast forward a few years, and she had spent it all. From living the high life, Evelyn ended up in a trailer home. Quite the roller coaster, huh? Makes you think about the butlers and their smart choices. However, Evelyn still spent her first million on something she enjoyed, just like this next couple. Number 10. Mediterranean Cruise Paul and Denise Hardway's story from Cardiff is like a fairy tale. Paul was a chef and Denise was a bakery supervisor. They were living the typical hardworking life in 2015. They barely saw each other because of their jobs. Then something worse happened. Paul found out he was going to lose his job. So what did they do? They added an extra line of lucky dip numbers to their lottery ticket. And guess what? They hit the jackpot, winning $5 million. Being huge rugby fans, they had their big check presented at the Millennium Stadium by none other than the legend Gareth Edwards. And guess what was the first thing they did? Paul and Denise quit their jobs and hopped on a cruise to the Mediterranean. They wanted to let their wins sink in, away from it all. When they got back, they paid off their mortgage and bought their dream house in Somerset. They literally had their life turned around in a day. While Paul and Denise focused on treating themselves first with their lottery win, this next person put the needs of others before her own. Number 9. Breast Implants Sarah Cockings was a social work student when she hit the jackpot in 2005, winning an impressive $4.2 million. Now, you might think she would splurge on herself, right? But no, Sarah had other plans. She'd always been super close with her family and believed her win was as much theirs as it was hers. So what did she do? She went all out for her loved ones. Sarah bought her parents a new house, treated them to vacations, and even got them cars. And her generosity didn't stop there. She also took care of her siblings, including giving money to her sister for her breast augmentation. That's how Sarah used her first million. Like Sarah, this next person didn't forget his family members while spending his first million. Number 8. Vacation for All Nigel Willits from Carafilly had a pretty normal life in 2014, running his own pub. He spent his days waiting tables, pouring drinks, and ensuring everyone had a great time. Then something extraordinary happened. He won $1.27 million in the Euro Millions raffle. So what did Nigel do with his winnings? Well, he decided to see the world, but not alone. He started by taking 13 family members on a dream vacation to Florida over the holidays. And what about his pub? Well, he's still got it. Nigel runs the place with a little help from his sister. But that's not all. He also invested his lottery money in something fun, two trampoline parks in Cardiff and Swansea. It seems like Nigel found the perfect balance between enjoying his winnings and keeping his beloved pub going. But unlike Nigel, who enjoyed and shared his winnings, this next woman's story didn't have quite the happy ending. Number 7. Shopping Spree this is the story of Viv Nicholson from Yorkshire. Her life changed overnight when her husband won a whopping $193,000 in 1961. And then the woman went on a spending spree like no other. Within just two months, she was burning through cash at $1,700 a week. First up, Viv bought a fancy $5,000 bungalow. Then the cars a sleek silver Chevrolet, and a flashy pink Cadillac. And her hair? She went all out, dyeing it shades of pink champagne blonde, then green, yellow, and blue. Viv loved her fashion, too. She bought countless frocks, furs, and shoes. In fact, this one time, she purchased 14 pairs of shoes in one go. Now, it's hard to imagine what happened to her afterward. In just five years, all that money was gone. Viv went from being a rich wife to someone who had an empty purse. It's a real-life story of rags to riches and back again. Unlike Viv, this next winner used her first million in the smartest ways. Number 6. Political Donations Janet Lee's story is quite unique. In 1993, at 60 years old, she won a staggering $18 million. Instead of splurging on luxuries, Janet had other ideas. 
she decided to use a significant chunk of her winnings to support the Democratic Party in St. Louis. But that wasn't all. Janet was incredibly generous. She donated a lot of her money to the University of Washington. Thanks to her, they built a library with a reading room in the law school, named in her honor. It still doesn't end there. When her stepdaughter graduated, Janet made another hefty donation, earning her a spot on the parents' honor roll as a life Elliott benefactor. But like many stories of lottery winners, Janet's had a sad ending. She also dabbled in gambling. Fast forward eight years and Janet's fortune was gone. Just like Janet, this next couple shared their first million with others. Number 5. Family Treasure George and Beryl were an English couple who really hit the jackpot in 2012. Against the odds of 14 million to 1, they won 4.45 million US dollars. Now, you might be wondering what they did with all that cash. Well, they did something pretty heartwarming. They decided to share their windfall with their family. Each of their four sons got a generous $31,000. Their nine grandchildren each received $12,000. And they didn't forget about their siblings either, making sure to give them a share as well. Now, even after all that giving, they had some money left. Guess what they did with it? Well, they figured, why not try their luck again? Some of that leftover cash still goes toward buying more lottery tickets. So, in a way, they're still keeping their dream alive. While George and Beryl decided to include everyone in their winnings, the next winner kept the money to herself. Number 4. Funding the Dream In 2018, Charlie Lagarde turned 18 years old, so she decided to take a chance and play the lottery. And you know what? She won it! It was her first time playing the lottery and she won it! Charlie was given a choice, take a lump sum of $1 million or take 776.73 USD every week for the rest of her life. She went with the weekly option. Why, you ask? Well, Charlie had a dream. She wanted to take photography classes, and that weekly option was just perfect to fund that. By choosing the weekly payments, she secured a steady income to support her passion. And if you do the math, it is a smart move. Let's say Charlie lives a long, full life. Over 60 years, that weekly $776.73 will add up to 2.4 million USD. So, Charlie's decision to go for the weekly payout is an investment in her future. Pretty clever, right? While Charlie invested in her future, this next woman spent her first million on something she'd been dreaming of for ages. Number 3. Disney World Tiana is one lucky lady from Colorado. She had a stroke of good fortune in June 2022 when she won a sweet $3 million in the lottery. So what was the first thing she wanted to do with her newfound wealth? Well, she decided to treat her family to a special vacation. Her destination of choice was none other than Disney World. She whisked her little ones off to the Magical Kingdom for an unforgettable experience. While many lottery winners might think of paying off bills, saving for retirement, or splurging on new cars, Tiana had one other idea in her mind – owning a ranch. It had been a long-standing dream of hers. That's how she chose to spend her first million. While Tiana spent the money on herself and her family, this next person decided to spend it on complete strangers. Number 2. Gift Cards for Strangers Crystal Dunn from Kentucky had a moment of incredible luck. She won $146,351 right after placing a $20 instant play wager. Once she picked up and deposited her check, she had a unique idea for her first spending spree. Her next stop was Meyer, a well-known supermarket chain. There, she did something pretty extraordinary. Crystal bought $2,000 worth of gift cards. But then she did something heartwarming. She started handing them out to complete strangers shopping in the store. Crystal felt she had received a gift and believed strongly in the idea of paying it forward. So she chose to spread some joy and generosity among the people around her. As for the rest of her winnings, Crystal bought a car and paid off her bills. It was a thoughtful and kind way to start using her lottery winnings. Now, after hearing about Crystal's generous spirit, let's turn our attention to the winner of the biggest jackpot ever in America. How did he spend his first million? Let's find out. Number 1. Hollywood Dream Home 
Edwin Castro won a whopping $2.04 billion in the Powerball drawing of November 2022. The man chose the lump sum option, netting $997.6 million. And guess what? He used to live in a modest one-bedroom house when he won, so Edwin made grand plans for his first big purchase. He set his sights on the California real estate market, securing not one, but two multi-million dollar homes. From living in a one-bedroom house, Edwin moved to a 14,000-square-foot mansion that has five bedrooms, seven bathrooms, and an incredible infinity pool. It's a true rags-to-riches story. Hey, did you enjoy these amazing stories about how lottery winners spent their first million? Then you're gonna love what's coming up next. Check out our next video to see the dumbest first purchases ever made by lottery winners. You won't believe some of the crazy things people have bought. Just click to watch and get shocked. Hey, millionaire. We all know the same lottery winners have a natural talent for spending their money on some of the most ridiculous things possible. However, a select group has decided to spend their fortunes on some of the strangest and most unimaginable things. In this video, we are going to show you the craziest things lottery winners have spent their money on. Believe me when I say, you'll be shocked with number one. And no, this is not just to get you to watch until the end, although that's a good idea. So stick around. Let's go. Number 10. On a Female Wrestling TV Show In 2008, Jonathan Vargas, a 19-year-old construction worker from Gaston, South Carolina, won the Powerball Grand Prize, netting a whopping $35.3 million. After becoming a winner, Jonathan bought his mother a new house and used part of his money to create his own television show, fulfilling the fantasy many teenagers have dreamed of. In 2009, he founded Wrestlelicious with his partners Johnny Caffarella and Jimmy Hart. The company produced a wrestling television show called Wrestlelicious Takedown, which featured scantily clad female wrestlers in comedy sketches. It wasn't the best of ideas and it never made it to its second season. I guess he could have predicted the outcome after choosing such a classy name. Number 9. Building a Water Park Cuddy and his wife Linda decided to donate a portion of their winnings to constructing a water park in honor of their parents after winning a share of $28.7 million on a $319 million Mega Millions jackpot in 2011. According to the Albany Times Union, they contributed $200,000 to the construction of Spray Park in Green Island, New York. Number 8. Donating to Politicians after winning $18 million in 1993, Janet Lee, a South Korean wig maker, donated a large portion of the money to the Democratic Party. This landed her a spot on Bill Clinton's dining table. However, that wasn't enough to keep her fortune afloat. She turned out to be a little too charitable. Her donations, combined with a gambling addiction and credit card debt, led to her declaring bankruptcy in 2001. Number 7. On Marijuana Legalization on November 13, 2012, Robert Bob Erb took home an incredible $25 million prize after winning the Canadian Lotto Max sweepstakes and began sharing his wealth with family and friends. But his kindness didn't stop there. As a marijuana activist and devoted smoker, he pledged $1 million to support the legalization of marijuana use. Just imagine what you can do if you had that kind of money. In just one year, Herb spent $125,000 to help organize 420 day events in honor of the famous holiday, organized by marijuana enthusiasts, where smokers from all over the planet gather on April 20th at 420 to light one up. As if that wasn't enough, $60,000 was spent designing the website for said events. $60,000 on lodging, $40,000 on merchandising and about $20,000 on advertising. Now that's what I call passion. It seems like a dumb way to spend money, but before continuing, you tell me, what would you buy first if you suddenly won $25 million? Let us know your answer in the comments below. Number 6. On a loan. Not just any loan though. Pay close attention to this one. Why would you need to take out a loan when you just became a multi-millionaire? That's what everyone wonders when they hear the story of Suzanne Mullins. Although Suzanne really needed the money when she took out a loan, we are still unsure why she managed to spend more than $48,000 a year if she already had another source of income. In 1993, she won $4.2 million, and her prize was divided into 20 annual payments. However, not long after Susan's win, her budget plans went south, leaving her out of pocket 
overnight. But Suzanne had a brilliant idea. She decided to take out a loan that would maintain her quality of life. She didn't decide to borrow from any lender, though. That's right, she decided to borrow from the same lottery that had made her a millionaire. After receiving her $198,000 loan, Susan could access all of her money thanks to a change in the lottery rules. Unfortunately, she wasn't smart enough about that money, and she ended up committing the reckless act of never repaying her debts to the town's lottery and never paying back the money she had borrowed. The company, of course, ended up suing the woman, and she tried to excuse herself by saying she needed the money to pay for treatment for a family matter. We doubt it did her any good. We're halfway there, so hang tight because you're about to see some crazy expenses. Number 5 on breast augmentation. When she was just 21 years old, Sarah Cockings won a three million pounds jackpot from a UK lottery in April of 2005. And yes, she didn't miss the opportunity to squander her money. After spoiling her loved ones by buying her parents a gigantic house with four bedrooms, Sarah decided to give her sisters two gifts that would boost their confidence, breast augmentation surgeries at the modest price of 1,200 pounds her boob. At least that's one gift you don't get every Christmas. I know that amount probably doesn't represent much of her total winnings, but yet, when she asked what she was spending her prize money on, that was part of the answer, so I thought it was worth mentioning. Number 4. Destroying Their Own Vehicles if you had the chance to go to a demolition derby, you'll know that organizing this kind of event isn't exactly cheap, especially as many of the vehicles there end up in pieces. A business that can pay off badly in the hands of an inexperienced young man who spends more money than he generates. In 2002, Michael Carroll became the winner of 9.7 million pounds, or as I like to say, a whole lot of money. After winning the national lottery, the 19-year-old began living like a king, earning the endorsement of King of Chavs and the Lotto Lout. Carol began spending his money at an alarming rate, squandering it on houses, cars, parties, drugs, and women. But if anything, it was the misuse of his vehicles that made him a household name after he destroyed most of the cars he had bought on a demolition derby, which he organized in his backyard. However, it wasn't the business that sunk the King of Chops, but his very bad money management and terrible decisions, which led him to spend time behind bars twice. Now let's get to the good stuff. We're getting closer to that number one that will leave you completely speechless, so keep watching. Number three, on compulsive gambling. If there's one reason that many big-time winners never get to enjoy their money, it's because of their gambling addiction. I know not everyone suffers from this, but it is true for many lottery winners, which is true for Evelyn Adams. In 1985 and 1986, Evelyn Adams won the lottery twice in a row and earned a total of $5.4 million, which is quite an accomplishment. Unfortunately, Evelyn couldn't resist the temptation to keep going to the gambling house, and eventually, she ended up burning through her savings. After having numerous gambling sprees in the Atlantic City Casino and failing in some business ventures, her fortune eventually vanished into thin air. In 2001, apparently, she was seen living in a trailer park with no asset to her name, probably regretting all the money she wasted over the past decades. Can you imagine yourself winning the lottery twice and back to back? That's definitely something you'll only see once in a lifetime. Number 2. A Never-Ending Shopping Spree Viv Nichols, a British lady, won a fortune in Britain's football pools in 1961, 152,000 pounds, which is the equivalent of $3 million today. She immediately ordered dresses from Harrods, purchased several luxury cars, and traveled throughout the United States and Europe. After her passing in 2015, her closet was full of haute couture, but her bank accounts were empty, and fortune was nowhere to be found. Although, to be fair, it was long for us to expect the money to be around still. And finally, number one, on the creation of a drug empire. How many lottery winners have ended up throwing their money away because of drugs? Probably more than many television media outlets would be willing to talk about. However, Ronnie Music Jr.'s case is not only unique, but is completely unlike anything you've ever heard of. After winning $3 million in Georgia, he used all that money to fund a drug empire, investing in large amounts of methamphetamine. Apparently, our friend from Georgia had watched too much Breaking Bad before winning the lottery, 
As you might imagine, Ronnie's grand adventure as a drug dealer didn't last long. By 2016, he was under arrest, having won the prize just a year before. Agents who raided Ronnie's property found nearly $1 million in methamphetamine, along with firearms, ammunition cartridges, and several vehicles. He was convicted of federal drug and weapons charges and sentenced to 21 years in prison. Now the question is, what would you do if you won $3 million? When you win the lottery, anything is possible. But with so many options, what should you actually do with all that money? Real lottery winners have the answers. This is the hidden truth about where real lottery winners keep their millions. Number 10. A Summer Camp If you've wanted to store tons of cash, where's the last place anyone would look? A Summer Camp. That's where lucky lottery winner Les Robbins kept his. Before he won the lottery, he was working as a substitute teacher and he loved it. Well, he loved working with the kids anyway. He didn't love the salary so much. It's not easy to get by on just $20,000 per semester. But his money problems were about to become a thing of the past. He was the holder of a Powerball ticket that won him the largest jackpot ever at the time. It was a whopping $111 million. The first thing he did was split his winnings with his fiance. The couple isn't together anymore but Les doesn't seem to regret giving her that money. The next thing he did was ensure he could keep following his passion for making kids happy. He knew he wanted to open the greatest summer camp the world had ever seen. By the time he was finished building, his camp had a swimming pool, a gym, its own stables so the kids can learn to ride horses, and best of all, a mini golf course. The only other thing we knew he spent his winnings on is a Jeep. I guess all he wanted was that summer camp. He went back to substitute teaching in the year 2000, but it looks like he only did that because he wanted to. He hasn't run out of money yet, and his camp was still fully booked at that time. Some sources say it closed down recently, but others say it's still operating. But either way, it looks like Les found a great way to store his cash. It must feel great to invest your lottery jackpot into something that improves a child's life. But our next winner stashed his money in a way less child-friendly business. Number 9. Whiskey We all know there's big money in whiskey, so it seems pretty smart to hide a lottery jackpot in a whiskey business. And that's exactly what Peter Lavery did. It was 1996, and he was working as a bus driver in the UK, earning just $300 a week. Somehow, he still found enough cash to play the UK National Lottery sometimes. And it's a good thing he did, because one of his tickets was a jackpot winner. He now had the equivalent of $12.5 million. If you can remember as far back as 1996, you'll know that was a lot of cash back then. A lot of the time, lottery winners spend their jackpot on useless things if they didn't have much cash before their big win. But Peter wasn't going to follow that path. Peter loved whiskey, and he knew that's how he wanted to spend his new fortune. He said getting his whiskey business felt like winning the lottery all over again. Instead of buying his own distillery, he formed a partnership with Cooley Whiskey Distillery, and together they created the Danny Boy Irish Whiskey brand. And this turned out to be a great decision because it got a lot of good reviews. This was his favorite business, but he also split up his winnings across multiple other businesses and invested in real estate. He now owns 30 properties in Ireland. Amazingly, all of this has been an incredible success. He's not only stored his lottery money very effectively, he actually tripled his fortune. He's not the only winner who decided to invest in his passion, although this next winner's dream involved a little more hard work. Number 8. The Life of a Cowboy Neil Wanless and his family were having a pretty rough time back in 2009. They'd lost their house and were living in a mobile home and his dad was forced to sell scrap metal to put food on the table. Neil was 23 years old and working as a cowboy. That was his dream but there's no doubt it's pretty difficult to make money as a cowboy these days. He was worried that he wasn't able to help his family the way he wanted to. One day, he got in his truck and drove to the nearby town to run errands. Weirdly, the town is called Winter. Maybe that was what inspired Neil to buy a Powerball ticket that day. He used his family members' birthdays as his ticket numbers, and that turned out to be his lucky charm. He'd won, and on a rollover too. Neil was the only winner of a gigantic $232 million jackpot. Instead of racing off to collect his winnings, Neil and his family took an entire month to plan where they'd put that crazy chunk of cash. 
In the end, Neil decided he wanted to invest his winnings into his work because he just loved being a cowboy. So, the first thing he did was buy a huge 23-square-mile ranch for his family, worth an incredible $9.9 million. He also bought a house for his parents and another house for himself. He even invested in his hometown, making sure to help the people there in many ways. He finally decided to sell his dream ranch in 2020, but not because he went broke. In fact, he stored that money better than most winners in one of the most expensive properties ever in the area. Even though Neil bought it for $9.9 million, it's now worth an incredible $37 million, and Neil is considered one of the richest men in South Dakota. That was a pretty unexpected way to store a lottery jackpot, but there's no doubt it worked. Here's another weird way to store lottery winnings. I'll give you a clue. It's normally used to store power, not money. Number 7. Batteries Jason Fry had worked hard all his life. Just before his big win, he was working three jobs at the same time. And they weren't easy, either. He spent his days pouring concrete and digging wells, and he still found the energy to work as a bartender at night. Sadly, even though he put all that work in, he had so little money that his house was about to be repossessed. As if that wasn't bad enough, he also had a second child on the way, and all he wanted to do was give his kids the best life possible. He'd only bought a few tickets in his life, but I guess the pressure made him think one more couldn't hurt. That thought was a real stroke of luck, because that ticket won him a $47 million jackpot. Suddenly, his money problems were over, and he figured he could go on a spending spree. So he bought a Mustang, a boat, a motorcycle, and a big house. But we all know impulsive spending isn't a good way to store your money. What changed? Well, one day, Jason realized he was being pretty stupid. A Mustang wasn't going to help his kids have a good life, so he changed the way he was spending. Instead of buying stuff, he started buying businesses. The first one he bought was a golf driving range, which soon started earning an impressive $300,000 per year. But his more important business purchase was inspired by his friend, who owned a Battery Plus store. Jason copied this friend and became a franchisee himself. Once he saw how successful the business was, he bought two more. Now, he's kind of a local celebrity, and his Battery Plus stores guarantee that Jason's lottery winnings aren't just safe, but are actually growing. But what if you win the lottery and don't need the money? The next lottery winners on our list were a couple who had enough money of their own. So, how did they choose to store their fortune? Number 6. Saving Lives This story probably needs a little warning. It's pretty sad, but it does have a happy ending. Paul and Sue Rosenau almost had the perfect family. Sue worked at a research institute when she wasn't being a stay-at-home mom, and Paul was a heavy machinery operator. They obviously weren't rich, but they were very happy with their lives the way they were, except for one terrible family tragedy. Five years before their big win, their granddaughter, Michaela, was diagnosed with crab disease. This rare brain condition mainly affects babies and toddlers, and tragically, there is no cure. It always ends in death. The family couldn't do anything to save their little girl. She was just two years old when she died. Five years later, Paul noticed that the Powerball jackpot had rolled over to a record-breaking 180.1 million. He almost never played the lottery, but that seemed worthy of a try to him, so he bought a ticket. Then he forgot about it. Luckily, the lottery draw came on the TV while they were watching. Paul rushed to find the ticket while Sue shouted the numbers to him up the stairs. He walked back into the living room with his ticket as they were reading out the Powerball number. Like all the others, it matched. Paul had played pranks on Sue before by telling her they'd won the lottery, so she didn't believe him this time. Finally, Sue agreed to go check the numbers. They had no internet at home, so they drove to Sue's office. But Paul was right. He'd won the jackpot. Paul's accountant friend was happy to offer them advice. The couple chose the lump sum so they could retire early, which meant they took home $88 million. But, as we mentioned, they were pretty happy with their lifestyle. They only needed a little bit of cash to retire happily. They knew a better place to put all those millions. They put it into a foundation called the Legacy of Angels, all in honor of their late grandchild. The foundation finds much-needed research into the terrible disease that took the life of little Michaela. They're investigating treatments for crab disease in babies and toddlers, and they even hope they might find a cure. 
and it has been an incredible success. Their research has led to a lot of knowledge about how to treat the terrible condition, which might never have existed without the foundation. Paul says they might even just be a few years away from a cure. Without them, it would have taken decades to gain all this research. They might soon be able to say they saved the lives of thousands of children. If putting your lottery winnings into saving the lives of babies isn't a good idea, then I don't know what is. By now, you're probably thinking, these jackpots are huge. And you'd be right. Big American lotteries have recently made it even easier to win smaller prizes, like $1 million. So you know there will be a lot more of them. How do winners of those smaller prizes store their cash? The next winner on this list might have the answer. Number 5. Pigs You heard right, pigs. This is a pretty crazy story. Sue Herdman started buying lottery tickets after a fortune teller predicted she'd soon come into money. Sue was a hairdresser, so there wasn't much chance of getting rich off her business. The only way she could think of was to win the lottery. And, in a way, you could say the fortune teller was right, because Sue did win the lottery. She took home 1.2 million British pounds. That's just over 1.5 million dollars. But Sue wasn't interested in a life of luxury. She wanted something more simple. So, she bought a pig farm. The farm is located in Northeast England and has over 7,000 pigs. With 1,000 piglets born every week, it's like winning the jackpot all over again. Sue seems pretty happy with her life knee-deep in mud. There's no doubt that's a strange life choice for a millionaire, but Sue isn't the only one who chose a kind of weird path. Our next winner did too. Number 4. A Subway No, not that kind of subway. This winner was Yancey Hicks. She had been working at McDonald's for years, dreaming of one day being his own boss. But there was no way that would ever happen unless something changed in his life. And it did. He won the Illinois State Lottery and suddenly had $1 million to turn his life around. He knew exactly what he wanted to put his money into. A subway. Now, he was the boss of a restaurant of his own. And it was a great way to store his lottery money because it's still a success today. Here's another winner of an even smaller fortune, but where did he decide to stash it? Number 3. A Trade Robert Salo is one of those lottery winners who broke a lot of stereotypes. That's because when he won the lottery, he was still a teenager. The Brooklyn teen was dreaming of becoming an electrical engineer. But sadly, even though he was already 18 years old, his family hadn't got the money together that would have allowed him to study and achieve his dream. Maybe he was holding on to his dream when he bought a $2 scratch-off ticket. Either way, it was a great decision. He won $1,000 every week for the rest of his life. We all know most teenage winners blow all their cash on stupid purchases before they even think about smart ways to store their fortune. But Robert was not one of those teens. He knew exactly where to put that cash. He'd invested in learning his trade and following his dream. At $48,000 a year, it was just enough to pay for his studies to qualify as an electrical engineer. He completed his studies and went on to follow his dream, as well as improving the lives of his parents because they didn't have to feel guilty about not having the money to help him do that. And his trade earns him money even today. Do you think Robert is the only teen who is smart enough to put his lottery win in a good investment? We've got another one for you. But where did this winner choose to put their money? Number 2. An Investment in Themself Ianthi Fulliger was an 18-year-old from England. She was working as a waitress at the time, and she wasn't making a great salary. She was earning even less than minimum wage. But she had a dream. She hoped that one day she might become a successful lawyer. She was now old enough to play the lottery, so she figured she'd spend some of the money she'd earned on a Euro Millions lottery ticket. It was the best purchase she'd ever made. She watched the draw on the TV and couldn't believe what she saw. Every single one of her numbers was read out. She was one of several winners of the 102 million pound jackpot, but she still went home with the equivalent of 8.6 million. And that was enough. She already knew what she wanted to do with it. She paid for law school and passed. She definitely had cash left over after that. She took a year off to travel to Egypt, bought her parents a house, and replaced her old car with a new, sensible new one. But even with millions in the bank, she chose to live like a normal student, with a good reason. She hoped she would one day have enough funds to open her own law firm. She kept a low profile, 
but some sources say she's worth about $10 million now. I guess you don't need any more evidence that she stored her lottery winnings in a really smart way. Most people agree that investing in yourself is the best way you can spend your money, so that seems like a pretty great decision. But the last person on our list put their lottery winnings into maybe the strangest place ever. Number 1. The Lottery You're right to feel a little confused here, but this lottery winner is known for putting his lottery winnings straight back into the lottery. Richard Lustig has won the lottery a whopping seven times. The first time he won was back in 1992, just two weeks after his child was born. There's no better time to win the lottery than that, and he used the $10,000 to pay his hospital bills and do some renovations on his house. Ten years later, he won again. But it wasn't just once. He won a whopping four times, and he wasn't about to stop there. His fifth win was his biggest ever at 842000 and he still won again after that, twice. In total, Lustig had won over a million dollars. But with seven wins, he's got to be the luckiest person ever, right? Well, he doesn't think so. He's now the author of a small book called Learn How to Increase Your Chances of Winning the Lottery. It's not the catchiest title ever, but it sure does the job. In the book, he describes the things he used to do to increase his chances. He says you should research your numbers to see if they've won before. Play the same numbers over and over until they win. And lastly, invest as much money as you can into buying lottery tickets. And that's exactly what he put his lottery winnings into. There's a lot of debate over whether Lustig really is a lottery guru or if he's just a scam artist trying to get you to buy his book and courses. We'll leave it up to you to decide if his system really is a system or if buying loads of lottery tickets is always going to guarantee a win eventually. These winners knew exactly where to keep their lottery winnings so they were safe, growing, or doing something amazing. But these ones didn't get the chance. Instead, they were struck by the lottery curse. Check out what happened 